Yes, Mr. Douglas, I understand. You want six girls to model evening gowns for your fashion show tomorrow night. And they've got to be tall, slender, and attractive, Mr. Bennett. I understand. They will be, Mr. Douglas. In fact, I can give the same girls you had a few weeks ago. Oh, do that. They were very satisfactory. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, do you think we have time to finish our little conversation now? Oh, I'm sorry, sugar. Business is business. You understand? I understand more things than maybe you realize. All models aren't dumb, you know. They just look dumb. Uh, Sugar, listen, you're going on a photography job tomorrow afternoon for me. Two girls, you and Betty Down. Oh, uh, uh, wait a minute, Sugar, will you? Mr. Bennett speaking. Uh, Douglas again, Bennett. Oh, yes, Mr. Douglas. Uh, I just wanted to make sure of something. One of the girls you're sending me for my fashion show will be Sugar Keen. Oh, you? yes, of course, Mr. Douglas. In fact, she's right here in my office at this moment. Oh, fine, fine. Just wanted to check, that's all. Bye. Bye. Somebody wanted me? I just wanted to be sure you'd be on a fashion show job tomorrow night, Sugar. Another Hollywood-style preview. You worked a few weeks ago, remember? Return engagement by popular demand. Mm -hmm. Well, at least I'm not slipping. Slipping? Why, you're the top photography and fashion model in the country, Sugar. Have been for years. Let's get back to this business about the date tomorrow afternoon. You say it's important. And I'm going to work with Betty Downs, huh? Yes, it's very important. The pictures are for a Hollywood department store. Every movie producer in California will see them. Doesn't that make the job important? To Betty, maybe. She's got movies on her mind. Not me. She's got movies on her mind when she hasn't got Slugger Davis on her. She's not taking your prize-fighting boyfriend away, is she? She's trying, and I don't like it. And I like it a whole lot less because Slugger doesn't mind. Uh, look, let's keep personalities out of business, sugar. You see, I've got a personal contract with Betty. And if she goes to Hollywood, I'll make plenty. On that tomorrow's date, see that her makeup is okay. See that she looks right, will you? Look out for her, please, sugar. Listen, Al, I'm telling you right now. If she doesn't watch her step, she better look out for me. No, oh, no, Miss Downs, not like that. Like this. Who should do blue? Who should do blue? The lips around. Project the words. Now, once more, please. Who should do blue? Who should do blue? No, 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 Miss Downs. Uh, so, 20 minutes now, I try to teach you how to speak. How to speak. Like this. We, the, he, she. How now, brown cow, who shoe do blue? And what comes out? We the he, she, how now, brown cow, who shoe do blue? Ah, you learn nothing. I'm sorry, Pierre, I'm trying. Trying? Trying is not enough. Doing, you must do. Hello, once more, please. The ooh sounds. You ready? No, no, I'm not ready. I'm tired of making ooh sounds. Oh, Pierre, I'm so tired. Oh, oh, I am sorry, my dear. You model all day, and then in the evening you work with me. It is very difficult for you, Nespa. You, you rest a while. We try again in a few minutes, eh? Who is that? Come in. Hi, Betty. What's the good word? Hello, Slugger. Sugar Keen isn't here. She isn't even expected, I don't think. I'm not calling for Sugar, Betty. Not tonight. I came to pick you up. Hiya, Frenchie. I'm Slugger Davis, next middleweight champion of the world. You're Pierre, ain't you? I am Pierre, ain't I? Well, ain't you? Talk, such talk, sucker, no. Maybe it is you who ought to come take lessons from me. Hmm? <laughs> well, I talk plenty good with my hands, Frenchie. That's all I got to worry about. You might worry about Sugar King. She isn't going to like your calling for me, Slugger. No, I guess she ain't. But ain't that too bad, Betty? Ain't that just too bad? <laughs> upper lip a little more, Betty. Oh, here, give me the lipstick. I'll show you what I mean. Thanks, sugar. It's awfully swell of you. I understand these pictures we're taking are going to Hollywood. They sure are. And don't you wish you were? Sugar, Hold I... your mouth still so I can take care of that upper lip. 
Why I do these things, I'll never know. Now, there. Take a look. Better? Oh, it looks fine. Have you plenty of pancake on? Those lights are going to be hot. I think I've got enough. Sugar, I want to talk to you about Slugger. I want to talk to you about him, too. Only not now. Business is business, and this is a job. Use a little more pencil on your eyebrows. And put a dot on the outside of each eye. Makes your eyes photograph bigger. Thank you. Right here? Yeah, that's the spot. Okay, let's get inside. I'm ready. Thanks again, sugar. I'll never forget this. Yeah, I know. Okay, Mr. Stevens, we're ready. Where do you want us? I want you for the first shot. You alone, Miss Keene. Miss Downs, you can wait in the anteroom if you like. I'll call you when I want you. You'll find magazines if you can't read. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. I'll be ready when you call me. What now, Stevens? Just walk up those steps, sugar. At the third step, turn around and face the camera. This shot shouldn't take long. Ready? Yes, I'm ready. Walk up about here. Turn, face the camera. Hold it just like that, sugar. Want to take a look through the camera. Hold it now. While you're looking, see if you can find the hundred dollars I'm supposed to get today. Turn a little bit more this way. That's good. Now back so I can get a shadow across the bottom half of your gown. I still haven't seen the hundred. Yes, that's about it. Let me take another look through the camera. Maybe the money will be there this time. All right, you'll get your blackmail. Now hold still. <laughs> you look awfully silly, Stevens. In fact, the only way you don't look silly is when you're paying me my little weekly hush money. Stop talking and bend your right knee a little. A little more. Good. Hold it. Hold it just that way and turn on the smile. The big prop smile, but make it like you mean it. I'll just make believe you're paying me. How's this? That's good. Now hold it. That did it. Relax. One shot sugar, they call me. What next? Relax for a while. I want to take Miss Downs now. I'll get her. Right after you give me that little cash present I get every week. You do like giving it to me, don't you, Stevens? I, I couldn't possibly accept it if I thought you didn't enjoy giving it to me. I love it. And you'll have it before you leave. When do I get back those letters? At the end of the year, just as I promised. You pay me every week for a year like a good little boy. And your wife will never know you were a bad little boy. And that I have your letters to prove it. You wanted Betty, I'll get her. Hey, Betty. <laughs> oh, sugar. Hello, honey. Oh, just like that. Hello, honey. Slugger, I told you to keep away from Betty. But, Sugar... I'll handle this, Betty. Look, Sugar, what are you building? Can I talk to another dame without you blowing your lid? Listen, Slugger. The only thing that will ever break you and me up is my making up my mind that it'll happen. Me. When I decide you and I aren't a team, we're through. Not when you do. Do you understand? Maybe I do, and maybe I don't. Maybe I don't like you handing out the decision, sugar. What happens then? What happens then? Mm hmm This happens. Try walking out on me, Slugger. And you'll be the sorriest pug that ever walked on his heels. I said the sorriest. I meant the deadest. Come on inside, Betty. We have to have our pictures taken. Business is business, you know. Office of Philo Vance, private investigator, Miss Deering speaking. Mm, what a speech it is, too. <laughs> Hello, Ellen. Vance there. Hi, Mr. Markham. You're not taking him out of the office, are you? I'd say it was more a matter of his wanting to go than my taking him. May I talk to him? Why, of course. Just a moment. The district attorney, Vance. Markham? Splendid. Would you hand me the phone, please? There you are. Thanks. Hello, Markham. Uh, Vance, this is one of those calls. There's been a murder. How soon can you come up? I'm practically there now. Who was killed? A photographer's model named Sugar Keen, Vance. She was throttled. A wire wound tightly around her neck. Sugar Keen, eh? Do you have the wire? No, I don't. It's missing. Sergeant Heath is Miss Keene's employer, Al Bennett, up here, and I'm phoning you from her apartment in the Belmont Towers. I'm on my way, Markham. I did want to meet Miss Keene, but I would have preferred to have her answer when I said, how do you do? Bye. 
I heard that, Vance. So Sugar Keen has been murdered. That's what the man said. You sound as if you knew her. Only by sight. I've seen her pictures in the magazines. Everybody has. In fact, I think there's a picture of her in this magazine here. Now, wait till I find it for you. Yes, look. Here. Here's a picture. Girl on the right. Oh, she was lovely, wasn't she? Vital statistics. Her name, Sugar Keen. Height, 5 foot 10. Weight, 120. Single. Uh, brown eyes, blonde hair. Is seen very often with Slugger Davis, middleweight challenger. Very interesting, Ellen. You know, you're an ideal secretary. There isn't anything that you don't know or can't find out, is there? Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly, Vance. I wouldn't mind knowing or uh, finding out something about you. You mean there are things about me you don't know, Ellen? <laughs> Surprising after all these years shows how resourceful I am. Or evasive. Hmm. Well, aren't you off to investigate the Sugar Keen murder? I most certainly am. Ellen, who's the girl shown posed with Miss Keen? Looks a little younger than the murdered girl. Oh, she works for Al Bennett's model agency, too, Vance. Name's Betty Downs. She's new. Just thought I'd ask. Well, maybe she's new, but I'd better be off to meet Markham at the apartment of the late Sugar Keen before any clues left around are old. I'll be back, Ellen. Okay, Vance. I'll be here. <laughs> Keen worked for you, didn't she, Mr. Bennett? You must know who didn't like her. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, Sergeant Heath. I wish I could help you, but this has upset me terribly. Uh, you see, I've known Miss Keen so long, ever since she was a child. But you, you've got to give me time to think. You've just got to. Sorry, Mr. Bennett. I didn't mean to be tough. Oh, you've gone over this murder room without missing a thing. Can't find any clue to work on. I thought maybe you could help us. Well, maybe I can, but n not right now. I can't do anything right now. Look, can't I leave? Please, you know where to find me if you want me again. Uh, I'll ask the district attorney. He's talking to his friend, Philo Vance, in the next room. There just doesn't seem to be anything at all that points... Hey, to D.A., uh, is it all right for Al Bennett to leave? Oh? Uh, he's the head of the model agency this keen gal worked for. He wants to go home. Let him go, Heath. We can get him if we want him. Okay, D.A., just wanted to get an okay from you. Well, Vance, you know all the facts. What do you think? Markham, it's hard to form an opinion at the moment. You say she was strangled with a wire of some sort. That's right. The police are tearing the murder room next door apart, trying to find it. Ah, I wish we could lay our hands on it. Is that the only wish you can make, Markham? Because if it is, I can fill it for you. This is the murder weapon, I think. Where did you get that, Vance? It was lying here in a corner of this room. I saw it glisten while you were talking to Heath just now. The police haven't gotten around to this room, apparently. But, Markham, it isn't a piece of wire. No, I can see that. Just what is it? I'm not positive, but I believe it's a piece of costume jewelry. A coiled bracelet that's been unwound. Mm. It would make a very effective weapon. Here, take it, and my handkerchief with it. There may be fingerprints on it. Segments of fingerprints, anyhow. It isn't very wide. My guess is the murderer threw it into this room as he ran out of the apartment. Do you agree, Vance? With the fact that the murderer threw it here? Certainly, I agree with that, Markham. What I don't agree with, however, is that you refer to the murderer as he. This is District Attorney Markham. The cover girl murder case began when Sugar Keen, popular model was found strangled by an uncoiled piece of metal which Philo Vance believes was once a costume jewelry bracelet. Al Bennett, model agency head, told us Miss Keene and her boyfriend, Slugger Davis, had been having a severe quarrel over another model, Betty Downs, and also that at one time, Miss Keene was friendly with a photographer named Stevens to see Miss Downs, who, at the moment, is about to make an appearance as a model at a fashion show. Vance should be there... Please, Mr. Vance, I really must leave. I I'm due to go on any moment now. All right, Miss Downs. I'll walk with you to the side of the stage. Allow me. Presenting an original class for La World Creation. Mm. Imported clothing. Mm. Quite attractive. Featuring off the shoulder design for the cocktail. And such lovely shoulders. Please notice the under the The full black skirt. Shirt. Oh, that's a mm. wonderful. The bottom in contrast with white crepe. Quite effective. 
I'm on next, Mr. Vance. I'll have to leave you now. Very well. I'll watch you from the wings. Fine, but uh, very interesting. Goodbye. Our very latest import, ladies and gentlemen. Another La Roe original. For very formal evening wear, severe black relieved by a gold band at the waist. Completely backless. And I beg your pardon, Mr. Bennett. No. Oh, uh, Mr. Bennett, is it not? Mm-hmm. The long black gloves. Fashion show doesn't seem the same without Sugar Keen in it, Mr. Bennett. You should have known her. She was wonderful, lovely, exquisite. All three. She was everything, Mr. Bennett. Everything. Mr. Bennett, did you know it was a bracelet that strangled Sugar Keen? A bracelet, Bennett? One of those coiled bracelets, Bennett. So that you Someone unwound it, used it on Miss Keene's neck. You think, Miss Down? Possibly. I understand she was part of a triangle along with a pugilist named Slugger Davis. People have been killed for less. Tell me, as far as you know, did Miss Downs own a coil bracelet? Well, uh, well, yes, as a matter of fact, she did. I've seen her wear it. Really? I almost didn't want to hear that. Well, I'll see Miss Downs later on. I have another call to make at a gymnasium. Perhaps the challenger to the middleweight championship of the world can forget the ring to discuss a bracelet. Just keep on your work, Mr. Davis. I didn't mean to interrupt your bag punching. You ain't, man. You ain't. No, I don't suppose I am. Davis, I understand you and your former sweetheart, Sugar Keen, had quite a quarrel just before her death. Yeah, so? You might have killed her, Mr. Davis. Yeah? Well, all I've got to say to you, Vance, is this. Well, that's, that's quite a punch you have, Mr. Davis. And I think I understand what it was you had to say to me. I'm very happy, though, that you said it to me through the medium of that punching bag. Hey, Slugger. Hey, Slug. There's a doll outside wants to see you. And what a doll. Yeah, well, thanks, Frenchie. Uh, you want in on this too, Vance? For just a second, I want to verify one fact. Huh? It has nothing to do with you, believe me. Is this the door we use? Sure. Wait till I throw this robe over my shoulder. There. Okay, let's go. Hi, Betty. Slugger, Good I... afternoon, Miss Downs. Mr. Vance, I didn't expect to find you here. You said you had something to ask her, Vance. Go ahead. Very well. Miss Downs, I've been informed that you owned a coiled bracelet. Costume jewelry, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I own a bracelet like that, but I can't find it anywhere. And I don't understand where it can be. No. I wonder. What upsets me is that I only bought it yesterday. Well, I've never had a chance to even wear it. So you say. I just want to check one more thing. Did Sergeant Heath take your fingerprints? Forget it, Vance, and beat it. Heath took everybody's fingerprints, and I've taken about all that talk of yours I can stand. Get out of here. Betty and I have things to say to each other. Have you really? Perhaps it might be a good idea for both of you to devote the things you have to say toward perfecting an alibi for each other. I tell you, Markham, I needed that guy Vance on this case like I needed a hole in the head. I got it all wrapped up. Really, Heath? How? How? We know what the murder weapon is, don't we? That bracelet, right? Yes, and if memory serves me, it was Vance who found it. Sure, because he was in the room next to the murder room, and that's where it was. But who checked the fingerprints on it, and who found whose they were? Me, that's who. Uh, whose prints are on the bracelet? Whose prints? Betty Downs, that's whose. She had to get her prints on the thing when she unwound it to strangle the keen gal. Hello, Markham. Heath. Hello, Vance. Hi, Vance. Vance, you're just in time to help with a hosanna or two to be hurled in Sergeant Heath's direction. Hmm. He has fairly conclusive proof that Betty Downs murdered Sugar Keen. You bet I have. Congratulations, Heath. I hate to say this, but I know who killed Miss Keene. I've known for some time now. You have? <laughs> sure. As soon as the D.A. mentions his name, you say you knew it all the while. Oh, but I did, Heath. Congratulations just the same even though Miss Downs is definitely not the murderer. Hello? Ellen, this is Vance. Hi, boss. What's up? My spirits, for one thing, Ellen. I think we're near the end of the Covergirl murder case. We sure did that quickly enough. 
How did we do it? I'll tell you all about it, as if I dared do anything else but that. But first, Ellen, I want you to call Markham and have Mr. Bennett, Miss Downs, Slugger Davis, and a photographer named Stevens in Mr. Bennett's office in an hour. Right. Anything else? Yes, I want you to stop at the office of an attorney named Wolf, Bartley J. Wolf. And when you're there, here's what I want you to do. Forgive me, Mr. Bennett, for using your office as a meeting place, but it's centrally located and completely convenient. Perfectly all right, Mr. Vance. Perfectly Thank you. all right. Now, please, everybody, may I have a little quiet? Thank you all. Mr. Stevens, may I ask you one question? Vance, I've got two appointments for photographs in my studio waiting for me. I want to get out of here. I may not keep you long. I know a photographer with your reputation must be busy. Mr. Stevens... Was Sugar Keen blackmailing you? Well, was she? Yes. Thank you for being so very truthful. Actually, I imagined that was true. I found some letters you had written to her. And her bank account was larger than it should have been according to the money she earned from Mr. Bennett, to whom I am indebted for that information. You think because you know that you can prove that I killed her? Well, you can't, and I'm not sitting here waiting for you to try. I'm getting out. Hey. He ain't getting anywhere, Vance. Let's go, man. You it. can't frame right, him. I'll get back to your That's seat now, me. Stevens. Go ahead and sit down. Sit down. Please sit down, Mr. Stevens. I know you're not our murderer. But I won't keep anyone in suspense any longer. We were a little late in getting started because I was waiting for a telephone call from my secretary, Miss Deering. I had to find a motive for my murderer. I know it now. Mr. Bennett, would you prefer to confess? What? Me? Confess? Shall I prove how I know you killed Sugar Keen? I killed her? Well, Vance, there's something the matter with you. Did you hear that, everybody? He thinks I killed her. Now, why should I kill her? I needed her in my business. I liked her. She was my friend. Everybody tell Vance Sugar was my friend. Oh, I don't doubt that you two were friendly, Mr. Bennett. But you killed her just the same. You were entrusted with an inheritance which she was to get when she was 23 next year. Vance, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. My secretary found out that information from the attorney who represented Sugar Keen's dad up until his death. That was the phone message I got. My guess is you dissipated the money that was rightfully Miss Keene's and that you couldn't face the accounting you knew you'd have to have with her shortly. That still doesn't prove I killed her, does it? Everybody, does that prove I killed her? Nobody knows it doesn't any better than I. But I can prove you did kill her. I said that before, didn't I? You see, I know something. The one little thing that will prove it to the complete satisfaction of the district attorney. <laughs> tell me, Vance, that you're going to let me crawl with curiosity and you're not even coming down to the office? That's right, Ellen. Well, it's partly right. I can control your curiosity even though I won't be down today. Well, start controlling, boss. I've got questions to ask about that cover girl murder case. You'll find the answers on the dictaphone. I dictated a record last night. Now I'm going to sleep. See you later, Ellen. All right. But if you've left out anything, I'll be on the telephone. Bye, Vance. Goodbye. Take the phone, hmm? Well, we'll see. Miss Deering, you probably want to know how I knew Al Bennett killed Sugar Keen and why I sent you to that attorney's office. Oh, I certainly do. We knew Miss Keene was strangled with a winding bracelet belonging to Betty Downs. But Betty Downs claimed she had never worn the bracelet. I knew that was probably true because she'd have no reason to lie about wearing it once she admitted she owned it. But to make certain... I checked with the store where she had purchased the bracelet. And I was told it had been delivered late in the afternoon of the murder day. Mighty good checking. Al Bennett, however, knew she had that bracelet. How could he possibly know? He never saw her wear it. The only way he could have known is if he took it out of her apartment to use on Sugar Keen. I wonder what he was doing in Betty Downs' apartment in the first place. I imagine, with your logical mind, Ellen, you want to know why Bennett would go to Miss Downs' apartment. <laughs> Well, I believe he went there to get something. A glove, a belt, a handkerchief. Something he could leave at the scene of the crime that would be traced to Miss Downs. He hit upon the coil bracelet. His one mistake. And what a mistake. Once Bennett said he knew Miss Downs owned the winding bracelet, I knew he was our man. And if there aren't any questions from you, Miss Deering, I believe that is all that needs explaining. Well... 
Oh, what's the difference if I had a question? You couldn't answer it, could you? Hey, what am I doing talking to a record? I thought I'd covered everything, Ellen. Or perhaps I should say, uncovered everything. Suffice to say that I'm sure we've reached the end of the Cover Girl murder case. <laughs> 